Hello, for most of you who like to see me in a headset or don't see me enough of me at work, this video is for you. Not really. So we have this uh, program I wrote, it was called the um, Q Processor Tester. And what we're going to do uh, in this video is show you exactly how that works and how we can use that to debug and test tools. So first off, the program is located in the Tools folder under BMY uh, TFS 2012, so South Ranch and Tools. And uh, so we'll go to the Q processor tester. Open this project up. Now the idea is, is uh, we're going to open this project up, and then from that project, uh, we'll add other supporting projects for the Q or whatever project has the Q that we need to test. Uh, so as you see here, I've got DG35 core server, you know, and, and uh, those are required. But then I added an e manifest server, and the reason why we do that is because the Q processor tester will. Um, use reflection to, to find out all the iProcessor or anything that implements iProcessor. Uh, so here I've added a breakpoint uh, to my CBP inbound processor because we're going to test uh, something that came in for the AC manifest system into dev. So first, um, take a look here. I queried uh, simply the top 10 messages and I pulled a message ID out. I uh, don't really care which one it is because all it is is showing you how we can push messages directly into the queues without having to do the whole debugging setup and all that because the debugging setup is in itself is, is just cumbersome. We have to load you know your queue process or your, queue, or your, your whole queue system. You have to configure your, your listeners uh, and your processors depending on what you're debugging and uh, and start that, that you have to boot that whole system up and then wait for all the services to start and it's really kind of a slow process when you're, you're just tweaking queues and you're doing things that you could do normally uh, or debugging queues especially. It's just a nightmare. Who wants to sit here and dick around with it? So um, so what I did here is I opened up the project and I added them into the references. So I know that uh, SBNet manifest, uh, I don't know why that's, I'm sorry, that's that's manifest server. Um, here is we have the SBNet eManifest server, which has that queue processor. So I'm going to fire this up. Ta-da! So this data source here, you can change that to live if you like. I mean, it's, it's up to you. It depends where you're debugging. And that's located in the app config. Um, all of this stuff here is I've got these, um, uh, if you notice, like uh, uh, last most recently used. Uh, and I'll show you how I did that in a little bit. But it's nice because it, it actually stores that. And you can put, this is a test in here, or you can put any description you want. You can say, hey, this is just my test one. This is the queue I worked on yesterday. Whatever you want to put in there. Uh, what it does is it takes the first number or whatever you put in there as the ID. To load the data up. Uh, what this does is puts all the message message data in here. Um, it also, if there's any message properties, like if it came from a listener that's a FTP file listener, uh, message properties would be loaded because you can use those within your app. Uh, it also loads up automatically all the queue properties that are um, on this this particular queue uh, here. Uh, and these queue properties are passed in, so it's uh, it, it, it makes it easy to use. So now we have uh, queue service login for me. I just put myself because I have access. And this is where the reflections use, the scans, it uses get module, module supporting. Um, so we're going to go down and use the CBP inbound processor for ACE and click process data. Easy. That's it. That's how this whole freaking system works. And it's just so much so much better than, than, than the old Q system. So instead of actually processing this message, uh, I'm going to stop it. And then continue works and all that. Uh, if you noticed, I'll rerun this. I did something kind of cool here. Uh, I was just really playing around with uh, um, autocomplete. So where my message ID, you can down arrow to it or whatever. Or if I wanted to put a number in here and say this is garbage. I have this set up. So you know if I go to attempt to load the data, which there's nothing in there. Um, oh, there actually is that message in the system. OK, so yeah, I was trying to. To do whatever there, but uh, uh, oh, and if you need to add something like Q processor or whatever, you can add them right in here, and you know uh, the the name is uh, that's that's just for you know when you load it because it'll load up all the properties of all all the Q processors and um, that's why I do that. Um, but uh, now let me just close this out. We'll rerun it. And if you notice, the there's my this is a test and this is a garbage, so you can reload this. It's just real nice. Um, 
so it was a little bit difficult. It's still a little bit weird, especially with the clicks on the on download. I got a double click for some reason. I don't know why. I think that's just the Windows control. Uh, but uh, I, I did. I, this is all an MV, MVVM program, so uh, you'll be very familiar with our, our normal apps. Um, but if you take a look at how I have to actually put some hooks in here, uh, some code behind on the on the user uh, side, and that's what I do is I bind those to hide drop down and show drop down right within the main XAML. So if you take a look at, let me stop my program here. You can actually see this. Ah, I'm moving. So on the, uh, here we go. That's the uh, most recently used Q service login MRU, which is bound uh, directly on the view model. Uh, the text is bound, and also here's where loss focus, hide drop down, um, and then show drop down when uh, the, the base text box of that user control, uh, the text changes. So anytime you start typing, it, it'll then call show drop down. And show drop down has to figure, because if you're tabbing, it, it, somehow it thinks it fires this off or, you know, whatever. It's not just text changes, but it's also doing other things too. So I had to go through and actually figure out first off is it focused because if we're setting it somewhere else we don't want drop downs flying all over the place um, so it's it has to be keyboard focused and, and and don't execute the code if it doesn't drop down and then we just check and we check the selections and everything because it likes to auto select when you do the auto searches and everything so um, so this is just there to detect that kind of fix a couple bugs that were happening but overall it seems to work pretty good and you know we can use the same same functionality um, so you can, you know, as we tab onto the different forms, uh, you start typing, it'll search you, or, and you can do autocomplete, and it works really, really effectively, it's fast. Uh, so, we're wondering how I store this data. Well, actually, I just used the property system. Uh, I went through, uh, and used in settings, uh, I set a MRU connect string, message ID, and queue service log login with the setting type of string collection and the scope is user. Now, these are actually stored in the app data, like roaming section or whatever, so, um, let me see. So we're gonna take a look up in here, and I think we have the, uh, nope, it's app data local, it does not roam. So this would be my queue service processor tester. We open that up, and as you see, we have information in here that's stored uh, and I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. Oh, that's a VS host ones. So it depends how you do it. And then, you know, you can see that there's, uh, there's cool information in here. So, um, what's nice is that, uh, oops. Uh, you can see there's cool information in here. So as you see, this is just a, a single string, but it automatically does all this. You really don't have to, you don't have to do any, uh, plumbing or anything else. And, and really saving and opening that data is as simple as calling save. Um, if you take a look at the main view model, uh, I do an init properties on here. Uh, so, init properties, you can see I'm checking for nulls to initialize it. It's the first time the applications run. And I set them to new collections. Uh, from there, I just go through and, and set my uh, MRUs and, uh, and and load them up into observable collections. Since this, uh, there's only so many system collections, specialized string collection, uh, you can't put any class you want into, into property, so I'm limited with string collection. But string collection is not observable, so what I had to do is go through and add them to an observable collection just as, as kind of like a model. Uh, and then from there, when I'm done and I want to save it, rewrite that back out. Uh, and I just have a function here even to add to MRU um, that makes it a little easier to, uh, you know, uh, for instance, when something's added to the queue service login, I go through and I add that to the most recently used. That's really it. Um, and this system calls a couple things, like it expects DG35 core create session internal to be there and all that. But uh, you can you can browse through this MVVM uh, stuff, and it's 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 fairly straightforward. It's what we do. It's it's less complicated than the MVP VM too. So, uh, but it's the same you know Galasoft view model locator and all that stuff. So, uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed this as much as I did.